guys, what's up? In this video, I'm going to be going ahead and doing a review on the Spec Candy Shell for the iPod Touch 4th generation. This case retails for $34.95. I'm going to be going over what I think about it. Is it worth the price? Does it offer good protection? Stuff like that. Now, if you want to watch a drop video of this case, which I highly recommend you watch it, just so you know what you're getting into before you buy this case, go check out that snazzy iPhone guy's um, video where he you know, uses his case and he drops it. And the same protection that he's getting out of it, which is for the iPhone, will be very, very similar to the same protection you're going to get with the iPod Touch model. Now this one right here is for the fourth generation. They also make them for the third and second generation, like this one right here, which is black and gray. It comes in a ton of different colors. This one right here is the Moonsickle White. You can get it in pink, blue, yellow, green, I'm just naming off random colors here, black, but they probably have it since they have like 15 or 12 different colors, which is crazy. Um, I recommend you get a lighter color because when you get scratches on it, stuff like that, you're unable to see it, unlike this black one right here, where when I turn it, look at that, look how scuffed up that bad boy is. That's horrible. Now the white one, can you see it? Not as easily, but when the light hits it, there it is. All right, but from right here, you know, comparing these two, you can see the black one is scratched up a lot more. And it's just kind of the color. The white one kind of reflects light, so you can't really see it as well. This one kind of absorbs it, and you're able to see the scratches a lot more. So this one, they're not as visible. Now I got this little black uh, scuff right here. I'm not sure how that happened. Pulled it out of my pocket one day, boom, there it was. So whatever. Now, this case offer, offers double protection. Um, you have a hard plastic on the outside, and you have a soft rubber, silicone, whatever you want to call it, on the inside. And everything in black here that is accented in black is rubber. So their logo is rubber. These corner things are rubber. The volume buttons are rubber. Power buttons rubber. This inside is all rubber. And that is really, really good. So on the back here, you have hard plastic. So it's going to protect your device from, you know, sharp objects, hard objects, rocks, dirt, cement, asphalt, stuff like that. And the stuff on the inside is going to uh, give it some shock protection. So when your device smacks against the case, the rubber is actually going to kind of absorb the shock. So if you didn't have this rubber in here, the plastic would hit hard and your iPod would also, you know, get the same amount of shock that the back did. It's just not going to get scratched up. So this is the way to go. Silicone on the inside, rubber, and hard plastic on the outside, double the protection. It's pretty sick. Now on the side here, you have two buttons that look like your volume buttons, which act just like them. They go over your volume buttons. So when you have the case in here, you can go ahead and feel where they are, and you can go ahead and press them. They are raised. Go ahead and get that focus in here. They are raised, so they are very easy to find and press. Same thing for the power sleep awake button. It's raised, and it's very easy to press, and they are very, very responsive. On the inside, you can see we have these holes in here. That is a cut down on weight. Um, I don't notice too much of a weight difference at all between the two, but whatever. Now, I'm not too big of a fan about this, and I'll tell you why. I have a gel skin on the back of my iPod Touch, but if I didn't have that on, you know, the same kind of texture, you know, these holes that are on the back, it would kind of, you know, kind of print it on to the back of my iPod Touch, so I'd kind of see that same texture, those circles on the back of my iPod Touch, which I don't like because I don't like trying to clean that crap off. Here we have the spec uh, name, their logo, and a few other stuff like that. So let's go ahead and take the iPod Touch and put it inside. Volume rocker side first. Snap in these two, and we are secured inside. Now you will notice my bottom piece right here is not on there. I took a knife and I cut them off because when you drop it, this bottom piece is very, very flimsy. And it seems to break extremely easy, a lot easier than I'd like it to. So I just decided to cut it off to make it look a bit nicer. And I think I did a pretty good job at it. So just be careful with that bottom piece. It is a bit flimsy. Same thing on this one. You can see this one's really, really chowdered up because I can't even remember how many times I dropped my iPod third generation when it was inside of here. But this thing is trash. I mean, I would not use this thing again. This just looks hideous. 
but it still offers great protection. You can see it doesn't add a ton of bulk at all. These volume buttons are very, very responsive, very easy to access, feel for them. It feels nice. Same thing for the power one. You can hear the click. It does. You can still hear the click. On the back here, we have a cutout for our camera and our microphone. Very, very uh, good cutout. It's almost right on the spot. It seems it's just a little bit close to the camera here at the bottom left-hand corner. But I'm not going to be complaining about that. Spec logo imported into the case. On the bottom here, we have a big, nice cutout for our 30-pin connector, 3.5mm headphone jack, and our speaker grill which is nice. It's not, you know, you don't have the plastic running between them. So you can go ahead and use any dock connector you want with this case on. Can you dock it? I don't think you can because they don't give you a dock adapter. So if you want to go ahead and dock it, you're probably going to have to take the case off. Not a big deal because it's very easy to get off. What I do is I take this corner right here, which is the bottom left one, put it down, and then I lift up the top right. And then I do the same thing for the bottom one. Squeeze it, out comes my iPod. It's very, very simple to do. All right, now we have a nice lip on this case. Try and get that focus in here. Let's see. Uh, come on. There we go. You can kind of see that lip. It's pretty, I wouldn't say it's high, but it's a fairly nice lip. That goes around the case and it is rubber, so when you do lay it down on the surface, it's not going to slide around everywhere. So you don't have to worry about it sliding off a table or somebody bumping it, just going flying and cracking against the ground or whatever like that. Um, the back here is glossy. It's very sleek. This case doesn't have a lot of grip to it at all. It's just kind of like, you know, it's plastic. It's kind of slippery. I'm not going to lie. You don't have any rubber really here to grip onto besides these volume buttons right here. So, as far as, as far as grip protection, I mean grip, you're not really getting any grip on this thing at all. But that's not a big deal because I really don't drop it out of my hand. I usually drop it by sliding it off of something or trying to carry this in a drink at the same time and it falls. So you don't have to, um, well I shouldn't say you don't have to, I mean you do kind of have to worry about the grip. You know, just make sure you don't drop it, it doesn't slide out of your hands. If your hands are sweaty, make sure you're holding on to this thing tight so it doesn't slide out of your hand. So that is pretty much it for this review of the spec candy shell for the iPod Touch 4th generation. $34.95, is it worth it? Yes, this thing gives you a ton of protection. Very, very, very good protection for your device. And if you have an iPad or an iPhone 4, I recommend this case to you. So thank you for watching. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I will catch you guys later. Peace.